Hi. Hi, everyone. This is my wallet. And in my wallet, I have my credit cards and my bank cards, and I even have old-fashioned government-issued cash. And it works great here where we are today in a developed country. But what if you're not in a developed country? What if you find yourself in a war zone? In Syria, in the Ukraine, in Nigeria. How much is this still worth? Can you still use this? My bank is connected to my, my bank cards are connected to my bank, and my cash might not be worth today, uh, tomorrow, what it is today. So how can I then take my family from a war zone ridden country and take it across the border and start a new life? Today, we are in Sweden, uh, and Sweden has experienced over 200 years of peace, uh, which is of course great, but it may be makes it hard to imagine for us to put ourselves in such a position. But if we look a little time ago, its neighboring countries were at war. This is Nazi Germany, and during that time, the Jews were fleeing to, to save their belongings. And what happened with their belongings was this. This is the Merkur salt mine in the middle of Germany. Um, where the Raub gold was uh, stored. Raub gold being the stolen uh, um, gold. And as you can see in this image, especially the one there in the corner, the wedding rings of the Jews that were confiscated. It's a gruesome image and you can only imagine what happened and what stories were behind there. And unfortunately, in this day and age, things haven't changed much. In fact, since that same World War II, global displacement for the first time has toppled 50 million refugees. To put that in perspective, that is approximately the population of South Korea, or if we're in Sweden, five times the population of Sweden. So where to turn then, where my bank is no longer accessible, where my government issued money might not be worth for us today. How can I take my belongings, cross the border, and start a new life? In comes Bitcoin, decentralized money. Uh, you might have heard of it. Uh, to you, it's probably internet funny money. <laughs> the question I get the most is how does this actually work? Uh, I'll give it an attempt. So Bitcoin is a decentralized network of computers. It means that as long as 51% of the network agrees, a transaction is accepted. But similarly, if somebody tries to put in a malicious transaction in this network, and the consensus will not be reached. So with that in mind, 51%, you would wonder, okay, but who is in control of these computers? And it used to be you and I. I could take my old laptop and start being on this protocol and start uh, validating the transactions. And over time, this has been highly professionalized. So it started in 2009, and now you have even complete data centers um, doing nothing but validating these transactions, like a Swedish company, KNC Miner, who's building their data center up north. And to put that in perspective, KNC's miner's whole data center is only 6% of the total computational power put to use today to mine and to validate these transactions. And an important thing is here that none of these companies here control 51% of the network. And that is important because as long as that's the case, you can trust the network. So that's how the network itself works. But how then can I, as a person, transact over this network? For this, you have a private key and a public key, where your public key is the, e uh, the public key is the equivalent of a bank account, where I can send to my friends and say, hey, can you send me some money here? Um, where the private key is much like your password. So that gives me access to my money. I'll pause here and say that if you want to learn more about Bitcoin, you can go to a website like bitcoin.org and spend months on studying this and still not know what Bitcoin is, much like I did. Um, but going back to that private key, that private key can be put as a QR code on anything because it's just a password and it's a number of letters and, and, and words, or letters and, and uh, numbers. As was the case here behind me, at Bloomberg, where they put this, Q, this code as a QR code on a coupon. Uh, unfortunately, uh, if you put your private key on national television, that's not such a good idea. So within minutes, the money was gone, and Milky Way man master stole it and went away with $20. <laughs> Kudos to him. Um, 
And of course, that's all nice and, and joking, but what happens if you are storing your money with a company? Um, then what happens? And, and, and that might be a little bit more severe. And that was the case, what happened with Mount Gox. You might have heard of it. Um, these are the protesters outside of the building at Mount Gox. And they lost a swooping $500 million. That's no fun and games anymore. Um, which begs the question, what to do? So I'm a refugee. I cannot trust my banks. I cannot trust my government. And I don't really want to store my money with a third party. Or at least now, it's getting better. In comes the brain wallet. Which sounds magical and futuristic, but it's already here today. And it looks something like this. Yeah, not what you expected, but you know, uh, it looks uh, like this. It's an open source project, and anyone can go to this website and put in a key phrase, and that recreates the public and private key. So in this case, I have an example where I do hello, TEDx, and that then generates the private and public address for me. And just to give an example, if I change only one character in this, it completely changes all the information. So just going back and forth, you can see all the information, my private key and my address has changed. Now, coming back to the refugee case. So I have my Bitcoin, which I can buy on websites all over the world, and I put it in this public address where I can send money to. And here I then remember a passphrase where I stored, so I have access to this, to this address and this private key. Now I store, I store it here, I cross the border, and then now I want to recreate this money. And I want to have access to it from another geography. Um, so how do you do that? You can go to one of the largest websites in the world today, blockchain.info, and here I take this same private key and I enter it to import it. So I've done that, and here, boom, my money is available again. So again, I, had, I was in another country, I put money in my virtual uh, account here, I just only had the passphrase in my mind, I crossed the country borders, and I recreated my access to my money. Now, of course, this sounds sort of like my wet cryptocurrency dream and far from reality, but in actuality, the Bitcoin protocol has been growing quickly, very quickly. It's already billions worth today. And not only are people doing this in the, develop in the developed world, but also in the developing countries. Meet Ronald. Ronald is based in Uganda, and he uses Bitcoin to transfer money from his family in the United States back to Uganda, where he's circumventing the exchange fees. And much like Ronald, there are over 4.5 billion mobile users today. And that trend is only growing. So more and more people will have access to do actually these things and store their money in Bitcoin and then do these things. And if you wonder, hey, but they don't have internet yet, although the mobile internet penetration is growing at an equal rate, there are even initiatives to create what they call a mesh network, where you're basically creating a whole new type of network that is not even the internet, and you can use different signals to do so as well. In conclusion, what the internet did for information, Bitcoin is doing for money. And where the internet has its high point with the era spring, we don't know what's to come for Bitcoin. But it's going at an incredible pace. And surely, it will have an impact for the 50 million refugees out there today that are trying to cross the border and start a new life. But even more so, it will have an impact to 2.5 billion unbanked people in the world today that are disconnected from the global financial system. And that's why I believe Bitcoin stands for financial freedom. Thank you.